There are fewer evils greater on Earth than the abuse and exploitation of innocent children. Mug Club Undercover, just so you know, is teaming up with predator poachers to expose some uh, horrible behavior and some things that are bigger scale than maybe um, you may have been aware of uh, in the past. There is a group here called uh, Babies Only. It was the they posted there, mostly babies? Yeah, mostly. Some of them were. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's bad. Shit, I'm telling you. Yeah. It's bad. Shit. There's a record of your account clicking on the video, the video opening up and playing. I'm just trying not to, I'm not trying not to go to jail. What's the typical, like, have you seen any moms doing it to babies? Yeah, yeah, there, there was on there sexual stuff to the baby. What about a video of you not getting beat up, but quote unquote exposing you and you're on the sex offender registry for life? There's a new Mug Club undercover project where we have worked uh, tirelessly here behind the scenes with some uh, pedophile hunters, I guess, to use the term. $89 annually or try it mugless for $9 a month. You can sign up at ladderwithcredit.com slash mug club for the entire catalog, including Nick DiPaolo, Brian Callen, the Hodge Twins, Mr. Guns and Gear, and of course, Alex Jones, along with 100% more of this show.
Oh, that was creepier than I meant for it to sound <laughs> right off the bat. Man, combined with that open. I know. Oh, by the way, before I say anything else, uh, and of course you probably saw the YouTube dump button uh, pretty early on if you didn't get to see that intro. So if at any point today you actually do see this on YouTube, head on over to Rumble because it's going to happen probably about now. Uh, <laughs> and for those on YouTube, you're probably very confused because you didn't see the intro. It's... society ever never had gay marriage dummies okay <laughs> so we're going to be talking about i guess sort of the uh the upending of uh reality as you know it today there's been an islamic takeover now with some of your representatives uh where uh, a man in ohio a representative who uh, just uh they just did his acceptance speech i guess you say in somali Oh. And I had to double check that Somali was an actual language. It seems like one of those things where Somalian, you're like, <laughs> yeah. is this, what do they speak? Do they speak Farsi? I don't know. Is they, do they have their own language? Because then they communicate with no one other than their own pirates. <laughs> and then uh, it's all about, uh, you know, look, they're turning criminals into a voting base right now. And they're turning you, the American taxpayer, into criminals. That is the goal of the left, and you see it in New York City. New York City is a great microcosm to see what the left would do if unfettered for the rest of the country. Um, and we have an update here today on, uh, on Daniel Perry, the man who was a, a subway hero. So we'll be talking about that more. It's a live show, weekdays, 10 a.m. Eastern. I know we're doing it uh, tomorrow, uh, too, if you're on Mug Club. Live my, show, yeah. Yep. My question to you is, uh, what would it take for you to visit New York City in 2024? Genuinely. I don't just say that because we all know the city sucks. I mean... What would it take for you to actually go there and visit? Because we have people here in the office who live there, and they're not going back. Mm -hmm. Number two, CEO. Actually, today, uh, we have a fill-in. It's Gerald C. is back. I've been feeling kind of gay. <laughs> I don't know why the new Gerald C. has uh, a face like the Purge. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, uh, Very shiny. Someone should put some makeup. Yeah. i got gonorrhea, too. Someone should say, uh, you know, prayers up, by the way, for uh, Captain Morgan. Uh, you can comment, let him know you love him. He's fine, but today, for him, is a rough day. Yeah. <laughs> Any hole will do. <laughs> oh, I know one. <laughs> love you, Gerald. So we're not going to say it. He's sitting, okay, yeah. he's sitting yeah. in a doctor's office right now, watching, going, no! <laughs> <laughs> we should have sent uh, a crew on a magic school bus with him. <laughs> <laughs> Gerald, I knew I should have stayed home today. <laughs> Look, you get to be that age. Uh, <laughs> Gerald C likes yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, you know what's going on. Today. Perfect. And then uh, the third chair, well, today kind of sec. Well, but you know, Gerald C counts. We've, we've yes, got a good report. For sure. uh, when you hear this, you thank him for his service. Above all, he's going to be in Tulsa, Oklahoma, Bricktown Comedy Club. This Friday, this Friday, March twenty second. Josh right. Firestein, how are Stop you? Stop thanking for my thanking me for my service. No, no, no. We God, never will. I, uh, we never will. Jesus Christ! You can never do two. It's you've done. Obnoxious. You've already done enough. <laughs> I wish I didn't. To be honest with you, I wish I could take it back. You have done enough. Oh, she just movie. kept working at Wendy's for the rest of my life, making weird square burgers. Well, you know what? We thank you for that too. Yeah. Well, <laughs> always fresh, never frozen isn't true. I'll tell you that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you have a servant's heart, <laughs> yeah. and you've killed people. Hmm. Well, I mean, hearsay, hearsay. Hearsay. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm a blabbermouth today with Gerald and <laughs> the, the killing. All right. We have a lot to get to. Uh, Gay. Uh, also, we were going to announce the truck winner today, but um, we couldn't reach them. So we'll, you know, maybe they don't, maybe right. they don't get the truck. Well, there's 10 finalists and we couldn't reach several of them. So. Okay. So, hey, you missed your chance. Monday, we'll be calling somebody and announcing it. So answer your phone. Before any of that, uh, Josh, you may have seen this. No, I don't think you have. Here's um, uh, a large woman. Gosh, the YouTube dump is busy today. Yeah. <laughs> this is <laughs> Fat Lady on a Little Plane. Let's All watch. Right. I'm plus size and on a plank. Of course, I can't put the tray down now. 
I'm plus sizing on a plane. Of course, I'm going to sit beside this tall <laughs> member of my family. Oh, it's the plane's fault. I'm plus sizing that kid's going to be huge. Of course, the armrest is digging. <laughs> <laughs> I'm plus sizing on a plane. Of course, I have to shimmy down the aisle sideways. I love how she still she's, tries to do yeah. it sexually. I'm plus sizing on a plane. Of course, I need to see pelvic center. She's still hitting everybody uh, while she goes while she shimmies. Yeah, that's not a shimmy, by the way. That's, that's more of a roll. Yeah, that's it's, not a shimmy at all. More like a boulder. Like a boulder doesn't shimmy down a hill. Like we've gone through this. We have our problems with Boeing. Oh yeah, but this is not amongst them. You can't blame them for creating human sized seats you know what i think every time i get on an airplane because i'm a fat guy I, every time i get on an airplane i go god damn i need to stop eating ice cream at night because <laughs> i hate this you feeling. don't go of course look yeah. at this look at this a table tray by the way bringing it seems that this this woman might be might have a child i don't know if she's bringing bringing him on as a snack <laughs> i think she has three more inside <laughs> yeah that's why she calls him peanuts yes, this yes, is my yes. little peanut airplane, airplane food shit <laughs> of course of course i don't get a meal anymore you know, they used to give out peanuts on airplanes. They don't do it anymore because of allergies, I think. Then it was pretzels. They're not doing pretzels anymore. Yeah. They're doing, they're doing little biscottis or little cookies or little gram. And, and those like, are good. On Delta, the they're, little cookies. Yeah, they're tasty, cookies. but also you're making us fatter. Yeah, yeah I well, know. I mean, every plane she gets on is Boeing. How did she get in that bathroom, Well, by then the way? they charge you a premium for the seatbelt extenders. This is do all a really? employee from big seatbelt extender. Yes. Uh, oh, I love that. Yeah. How do I get in that business? They go, do you want some of these Swedish cookies or whatever the hell it is? And you're like, yes, I do. I'm like, would you like the upgrade to the seat extender, uh, seat belt extender? Shrinkflation spares no one. It seat spares no included. One. She could use some shrinkflation. <laughs> she could. Wait, so they charge She could use some shrink wrap, to be honest with you. Put that thing around her and get a heat gun. If the seat belt doesn't fit you, they charge you for the extension. No, I just made that up. <laughs> Don't fact check it. Oh, okay. The point I is. I believe you. I, I, thought you I, I like it. I like it, though. The point is, we need that 737 stapled. How did she? How did she fit in that bathroom? But she was in the bathroom, obviously. Yeah, there's no not. way. Does she just go to the? Does she not was, go to the bathroom? It was an the open door just, policy with the bathroom. You know the the stewardess is back there making the coffee. She looked. Oh shit. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if she's still back there. It's just two dangling legs. Oh, shit. Made a noose from the seatbelt extender. <laughs> Comes in handy. Hey, the point here is this is where we've be think about it. We just we just ran the open. How entitled people are to demand that you play along with their delusion. They demand that you use their pronouns. They demand that they can change their pronouns whenever whenever they want. I remember I remember you you may be too young to remember this, but you can kind of look. Do you remember when it was a big deal when Facebook changed it to like fifty three genders? Now that's way in the rear view mirror. I don't know what they have now. Maybe they just put in other and you can enter in your gender however you want. So those people, of course, change your life and your reality. And then uh, you have people like this who want the rest of us to have to change our planes. <laughs> At what point do you just say, no, no, we're not, going, we're not going along with it. Why? Because this is a human race and there's a certain level of tolerance where it just runs out. And I think we're past that. <sighs> it would be nice to have bigger seats for everyone, though. It would. It would be nice. But then the tickets would be more expensive. And but I'm not going to yeah. do it at the end of fat gunpoint. Yeah. <laughs> we'll change our seats when we want to change our Wonder seats. Bust, yeah. Not because she comes out there in her Dame Edna glasses and, oh, can you believe I have to side to step? I'm amazed that you can step. Those glasses look like they're fixed, fixated in there, like the, the cheek swallowed it in there. Yes, yes. It's, you know what it is? It used to be, remember, like you had one, you had like one fat kid in school. And yeah, everyone told you don't make right. fun of the fat kid because you don't want to hurt their feelings. But it was like one fat kid. You and even in, anyway. uh, sometimes you did. And then we had like film ugly, <laughs> where it was like someone who's not really ugly, but like they're not a leading man. We had film fat. Just right. think about it. Back when someone was film fat, they, they were fat, but they weren't like, th th were we, this, is, this is worse than the clumps. And this person yeah. is mad at us. You remember when, um, uh, what's his, why, George, George Costanza, yeah. he was fat. He was fat. That was fat. That was considered fat. I wish I looked like George Costanza. <laughs> <laughs> Without the balding, I wish. <laughs> hey, you can. The guy was wearing 32 jeans or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, he's five foot two. All right. <laughs> Just in case you thought you were living in an alternate reality, uh, here we go. So now, uh, uh, Democrat, Ohio representative, I have to get the name right, Ismail... Muhammad won uh, his primary. This was uh, on Tuesday, I believe. And the victory speech was exclusively. I know what you're saying. Like maybe he, they did both. Nope, exclusively in uh, Somali. <laughs> At least they have an American flag. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm trying to look for the positive. It's hard to find.
Uh, we should have added subtitles, but we didn't want to because I don't want to give that language credence. Now, <laughs> <laughs> why? Well, it's we literally had to create leather necks on our fighting forces because of the decapitations of your pirates at sea. That's where it comes from. Did you know that? Go back and watch our video with David Barton. Let me ask you this. We talked about this yesterday. Where else on earth can you give a victory speech in a language that's not the actual language of that country? And I was talking with someone the other day about this. Um, a lot of people don't realize we do not have an official language here in the United States. It's one of the very few countries where that is the case. Anytime someone suggests it, you're met with racism. That's what you're met with. Think of another country, maybe somewhere in Western Europe, but in Africa, in Asia, uh, you let me know if there's, or if there's, maybe we'll have a clip, someone can send it in through chat, if there's a clip of someone, I don't know, in Ghana, giving it in the King's English. Yeah. Maybe Canada? <laughs> you lived in Canada. Yeah, but well, that's what I mean, the United it? States, can't, it's basically the same. I mean... Arithmetic in French. <laughs> yeah, that's... All right. Sorry. We're off the beam today. <laughs> this is why Gerald is, you know, he's, he, he's a stabilizing presence. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for your input, Gerald. So Mohammed uh, won the race against another Somalian. This name is Abdirizak Dini, I believe. Mm. Uh, so it narrowed it down. It narr <laughs> they were narrowed down to two Somalians. Two Somali Democrats. Two Somali Democrats. Uh, that being said, there was a bit of a scuffle between the two candidates uh, over who won. I'm the captain now. I'm the captain now. I'm the captain now. I'm the captain. I'm the captain. I'm the captain now. Look at me. I'm the captain now. I don't know which one to dislike. <laughs> <laughs> that was their last debate. I, I'm skeptical. I think <laughs> you bring up some good points. <laughs> I'm skeptical that it's two people. I think it's just the one guy ran as two people. Yeah. Like, I know how to win this race. <laughs> like, wait a second. Wasn't that just you? He just has a, a prince wig? No. <laughs> <laughs> the, my hair is straight. Look at his hair short. All right. Do they have Clever a, pirate. Do they, do they have a neighborhood called Little Mogadishu <laughs> in Ohio? <laughs> Good. Well, actually, so Columbus, Ohio has the second largest uh, Somali population after Minneapolis. Oh. So the second largest. So that is Little Mogadishu. Pretty much. Oh, cool. Yeah. And this is... By Set the way, them tire fires, baby. <laughs> Light it up. Well, this it's just another example of the West completely kowtowing to Islam. And, and these two... Remember when Ben Carson got in trouble, Dr. Ben Carson, where he said that I believe that Sharia law is, you know, it can't be reconciled with the Constitution. They said that was racist. Well, think about that for a second. He's saying that laws <laughs> that completely... Um, contradict our laws. For example, we have laws that say women have uh, equal rights as it relates to driving, voting, not having the crap beaten out of them uh, <laughs> for whatever reason. Showing and Sharia law says you can. We have a law that says you have the freedom to practice religion. Sharia law says conversion, dimitude, or death. And people said that was racist to a black man who was raised by a single mother in Detroit. That's where they are. This is the kowtowing to an ideology that would would love nothing more than to completely destroy our constitutional republic. Let me give you a few other examples in Western uh, Western Europe, uh, or the Western world, I should say, civilization. In the UK, they're quite a bit further along the trail than we are. Uh, a man was actually shamed for eating lunch in front of Muslims during Ramadan. Here's a clip. Look at this kufar. Everybody's on Ramadan. I know, I actually feel bad for eating. <laughs> and this guy's... I'm glad to put it, so why not? This guy's stuck yeah, in his face. Up, bro, up, bunch up. <laughs> this guy just... Stop. He just sat here, stuffing in his face. So what? Don't mind. Wow. And then I love how it says in the caption, rather than criticizing or ridiculing another religion, let's seek to find common ground. He's not allowed what? to eat? No. <laughs> Fuck that, dude. They did this. They, they pulled this shit in Afghanistan, too, during Ramadan. Yeah. They told us we, we, we couldn't eat or drink in front of them. We couldn't drink water in front of them in the fucking desert. Yes. 
During the middle of the day, it's 100 degrees outside. Yeah. Well, yeah. not that hot at that time. But I don't know. How it's there. still pretty hot outside. Yeah, it is hot. It's plenty hot. You, know, you certainly said, should drink water. We said, I don't, we don't give a shit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, try something. Yeah, exactly. There you go. It's, it's, <laughs> hey, you know what we need to do? Set up that little, that uh, little, little uh, whatever it is. What, what do you call that? I guess they're in cahoots. What? A posse. Little Ramadan posse. Set them up and have the broad from the plane go work with them. <laughs> yeah, oh, would love problem that. solved. Yeah. Oh, can you believe I have to shimmy onto the plane? Stop eating. <laughs> nice uh, six-week plan for There you go. Nice yeah. six-week plan. It's called you take a bite, they're going to beat the hell out of you and place you in their harem. And not use you, right? You'll be last on the, you'll be last on the rotation in the harem. The guy has to work there every day. He has to work there every day with these people who just, like, they surrounded him. Yeah, they surrounded him. You're eating? Yes. It's, it's, not, oh. it's not just shaming, too. That's like, that's like middle school bullying. Yeah. Let's get all the kids to go around this one fat kid. Make fun of him until he does what we say because he has to. Otherwise, you know, under fear of getting beat up or ridiculed. I'm already going on Facebook no, it's Live. No, it's fun. Remember when we were young? Hey, don't give in to peer pressure. Yeah. And, and it used to be don't give in to peer pressure and smoke or drink because they were saying, of course, you know, this is bad for your health. Don't give in to peer pressure. Now it's give in to peer pressure as it relates to insert whatever here. Insert whatever it is of the day. It, give in to peer pressure and declare fat beautiful. Give in to peer pressure and declare all cultures equal. This is peer pressure. And this man... Is not doing anything wrong. Giving into peer pressure would be malnourishing himself. No, uh, but these are the most sensitive people on the planet. Yeah, like they're they're offended by him eating already. Can you imagine if they said all this stuff to him and he just looks up, doesn't say a word, and just keeps eating? Oh my gosh! They would take it as yeah. such disrespect, right? Because they're such pussies. <laughs> <laughs> like you can't talk about. You can name yourself after the the, after the prophet. But you can't write him. You can't. Yeah, you can't portray him at all. Well, you can't portray human beings in Islam at all. You can't eat during his holiday. You know. You can't portray. You can't actually create art that depicts the human form in Islam. Oh wow! It's like okay, go do that in your country. Go do that in your region of the world and keep it there. We have statues of people. It's okay. No, we eat lunch on our lunch break. It's okay. Remember when they used to say, this doesn't affect you? Oh, if you don't like gay marriage, don't get gay married. Well, here you are. Well, look, if you're not, uh, if, if you're not Muslim, then why do you care? Just be talented. Well, here you are. It does affect you. It's never enough. It's your lunch break. Do whatever you want. I just ask that you don't bring in hard-boiled eggs on a plane because yeah, I had to deal with reasonable. that one time, oh, and God. it was just... And don't put your fish in the microwave. Come on. No, don't put your fish in the microwave. Here are some other examples. There was a London train, right? Had some passages of the Quran there. Um, and in New York City, uh, there was a large uh, Islamic prayer in Times Square. And I believe we actually have a clip. Yes. This was just sent to us. This is Ramadan in New York City. Uh, <laughs> Jeez. Now, I don't know how that plays into when I lived in New York, that if you see something, say something, but say something. <laughs> what? Yes, sir. What did you see? Um, I saw thousands, thousands of Muslims uh, taking part in a call to prayer in Times Square. I don't know if you're familiar with... Uh, Islam in New York City. I don't know if you're a history buff, but um, <laughs> I think you should raise the code to at least orange. Well, it's, it's Islamophobic now to do that. Oh, yes. Yeah. You'll get in trouble yeah, for being hateful. And I was raised in, Montre I was raised in Montreal. I went to Centennial uh, High School in Greenfield Park. Had a lot of Muslims there. We actually had rooms that were dedicated to the call to prayer. Every single one to the letter despised Jews. I'm going to tell you, this is where multiculturalism, it's, it's not quite like the Islamic world, but you go from the United States where they're held accountable, meaning all people. We have certain laws of the land. That's why the left wants to do away with them. Then you go to, all right, Canada, where oh, we allow different laws for different people and we don't really prosecute them. I'm telling you, I had, I had a friend one time, he said, wait, you're not Jewish, are you? This was in the ninth grade. And then I said, yes, I am. Just to yeah, see what he would do. Yeah. He's like, no, you're joking. I wouldn't talk with a Jew. And I was like, well, oh, whoa. you know what, I, I mean, I get where you're coming from, but <laughs> it's still unacceptable here in the Western world. So you don't want half my bagel? Yeah. Or what's the deal? <laughs> it was Ramadan, so we were fine. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> the day. You know, that I, I got, it's not just that it's, it's the call to prayer, the Islamic call to prayer. It's that like anybody that would take over. You know, uh, what's like what Times Square? Yeah. Like if it was a Christian gathering and they're like, everybody needs to be quiet. Everyone needs to show some respect, even if you don't practice our religion. Right. Get out of Times Square. Don't make any noise. We're going to. Um, sure. 
play our God is an awesome God for 10 minutes. Like, this is enough. Like, this sucks too. This yeah. sucks so much. I don't care who it is. If it's, more, if it's Mormons, well, where are you going to put the bicycles? But I would just... <laughs> it's like, just, they, please, just They're like cavalry. They stay on them. Yeah. You know? it's, like a, it's like the world's most annoying flash mob. I don't know if they still do that. Oh my God, that's worse too. That's worse than the Christians. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it could be a Christian flash mob. Hey, oh, great. Another... White people dancing to The weekend. Awesome. <laughs> St. Uh, Paul, Minnesota. This was one, too. An art history professor was fired after showing a 14th century depiction of Muhammad. Why wow. should we care? It used to be, hey, I don't, I don't like that. I'm offended. Well, it doesn't really matter. Why? Because this is the United States, and this professor has the right to show art history. Mm-hmm. Leave. Yeah. Leave. Can you guys just comment? It's one of those scenarios. Remember it used to be where they would say when, uh, when Tipper Gore, and there were some Christians saying, hey, we need a rating system, and you know, we, we don't want our kids watching whatever it is. Let's say South Park, which, by the way, the creators of South Park said we don't think kids should be watching. That's why we're happy to be on later at night. But the, the mantra of the left was, if you don't like it, change the channel. Okay, how about if you don't like what the United States is, leave. Leave. At a certain point. Leave, And I'm not just saying leave if you're a Democrat versus a Republican. I'm not saying leave if you, you maybe have a public school district that isn't doing a very good job. I'm saying if you demand that other people not eat because of your holiday, leave. How about that? That's it. All right. Uh, and by the way, leave. I forgot. Uh, we can say this now, actually. Mug Club Undercover teamed up with Predator Poachers to go through. Um, really, some of that involves more than just... Uh, individual pedophiles, but uh, there's there's a larger kind of, I guess I should say, I always have to be careful. Monday, we're going to be airing all this. Alex Rosen is there. It's the first exclusive that we've done uh, with this person. I believe it's the first exclusive that, pred- uh, that uh, predator poachers, I keep wanting to say pedophile poachers, which would be probably a better name, pedophile poachers. And they cover more than just uh, pedophiles. That's though. true. They cover predators. Yeah. That's going to be Monday. Uh, this Monday, Mug Club Undercover. None of it happens without you. $89 annually. You can go mug us for $9 a month. So we're looking forward to that. We, uh, we wanted to do it today, but as with you know, any um, child sex offenders, you have to cross your T's and dot your I's and make sure that you're right. With hearts, of course. Yes. 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 They're very unpredictable. I'm excited. Yes. I like this guy. Yeah. I've been watching this video. He's the only person I subscribe to on Twitter. Really? X, yeah. I like Because I'll sit there and I'll watch his two-hour videos of him busting somebody. They're great. It's, it's the best. Yeah. It's better than Chris Hansen. Definitely, he, he was way better. Than He's funny too. He like yeah. he, he like roasts some of them sometimes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So he, pedophile he told, shows up as Jeff Ross at a Kroger. <laughs> <laughs> he told. I one, hear he liked little little kids. He, he the, told he one guy he looked like on Jabba the, the Hutt on chemotherapy. <laughs> 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 and then later in the video, that guy tried to slit his wrists and kill himself. Oh, geez. oh spoilers. <laughs> Well, no, I'm saying because it didn't, you know, it didn't work. So it's yeah. sad, no, you know, it didn't work. He's he still lives. It just leaves you frustrated. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, go for it. Well, let's continue with this. Well, we're talking about the American way of life. I've, I've maintained this. New York City. I live there. New York City is just the world's biggest city of completely unexposed rednecks. Meaning, a lot of people in New York City have no idea how the rest of the country operates, how they live, or the rest of the world. We just somehow uh, think that it's cultured because. It's this big metropolitan city. But the truth is many people there haven't driven. Many people there have no idea what it's like to own a firearm, to responsibly handle a firearm. Many people there have no idea what it's like to actually be completely autonomous, to have your own plot of land and to take care of it. Uh, many people there have no idea what it's like to not live in an apartment. To act, many people have no idea what it's like to quite literally have a yard. And then these people have an unbelievable amount of influence over the rest of the country because of the population in this one city. And it's worse now because they've gotten pretty much everything wrong in the last few years. So you may remember this story that we covered. Um, Daniel Penny was the man on the subway who subdued an attacker, uh, former military. Um, Yesterday, a judge ruled that Daniel uh, Penny is, did I say it's Penny, right? I guess. Penny, Penny, Perry, Penny, Perry, Daniel Penny. I want to make sure I get the name right. Um, He's going to have to stand trial in October now for the death uh, of Jordan Neely. Again, let me refresh your memory here. This was a story that we covered, and we unfortunately called how it was likely going to go, even though it is a a horrible, horrible travesty of justice. Here's a clip. Well, a judge ruling today that the man who choked a homeless man to death on a New York City subway will stand trial. Daniel Penny put Jordan Neely in a fatal chokehold on the train last May. How dare they? By the way, I will say that that lady, that's that's a newscaster. Uh, she had puts, some, puts she herself had some together eyebrows. well. She had those brows are going. Delivers up. it properly. She uh, that like that's the lady. You're like she could be. She could be uh, my babysitter. Not my she's kids. My babysitter. Your babysitter. My babysitter. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Stephen yeah. wants she's a little a milky, huh? <laughs> <laughs> that's right. 
And without Gerald, the show becomes Blue Velvet. So, yeah. <laughs> Penny <laughs> is going to stay in trial for being um, a good Samaritan. And unfortunately, in New York, that is impermissible, which brings us to this week's New York State of Crime. And, and um, I'm going to go through some examples of white offenders in New York versus, you know, insert minority of the day here offenders in New York, their crime reform, which has actually resulted in a skyrocketing crime rate and innocent civilians living in fear while criminals feel emboldened. But, you know, we often make this mistake with children. And I'm going to apply it here. We say, hey, what do you want to do when you grow up with children? And they go, I want to be a fireman or I want. And then they realize when they grow up, well, hold on a second. That comes with a lot of baggage that maybe isn't for you. We don't often ask young children, we say, hey, what kind, of, what kind of a lifestyle do you want to live? What kind of a man or woman do you want to be? And that applies here right now. Someone needs to grab New York by their hair and say, hey, hold on a second. What kind of a city do you want to be? What kind of a country do we want to be? Genuinely. What kind of a country do we want to be? Because you do have somewhat of a binary choice as it relates to crime. Do you want to be a country, a city, where criminals feel as though they are emboldened and they commit their crimes, often violent crimes, without fear, and the citizens cower? Or do you want to be a country, do you want to be a city, where criminals know that it's going to be met with a lot of pain and discomfort? You, you can't have both. New York City has decided that they want to be a society that favors criminality. And I'm not just saying that because I don't like the people running it. The statistics bear this out. And even the left, they're starting to acknowledge it. You also have a very good contrast. New York, when I lived there for a while, two different stints. Um, and there was a period, and I, I had spent a lot of time, I had family there. When Rudy Giuliani was mayor, you may not remember this, it, the left was complaining, saying, New York used to have grit. Used to have grit. Now Times Square is like Disneyland. <laughs> you mean they the fact that you're not being shot and or blown while someone's trying to shake you down? Like, yes, okay, I guess it lost its grit, but at least it's safe. The left was upset about it. Well, we're right back to where we started. When they say they want, they miss it when it was gritty, what they mean is, I watched three seasons of The Sopranos. Yes, yes. And I liked wow. it. For me, I'm like, I watched Jason Takes Manhattan. I haven't seen that. Oh, is that like a Jason Yeah, movies? he just goes to New York. Oh, hell yeah. And it wouldn't be half... It wouldn't be half as bad as the crime is now. No, well, back then it was, I think it was In those in the movies, 80s. it was like, you'd be like, oh, wow, what a bloodbath. It was like seven people killed. Right, yeah, I know. Bloodbath. You like that? Take Manhattan. Oh, shoot. That's true. That's Brooke true. Shields. But this is New York. This is where we are. So Daniel Penny is a perfect example. And we use it as a jumping off point. Uh, this person, arrested, former military, I believe was a good Samaritan, arrested now, charged with manslaughter after subduing a violent lunatic on the subway. He ripped his jacket off. And, violent, and threw it at the people sitting down to my left. Kind of sexy. To music at the time, um, and he was yelling, so I took my headphones out to hear what he was yelling. And the three main threats that he repeated over and over was, I'm gonna kill you, mm -hmm. I'm prepared to go to jail for life, and I'm willing to die. It's oddly specific, we'll come back to it. <laughs> Sounds paraphrased. <laughs> Some people say that I was holding on to Mr. Ely for 15 minutes. This is not true. I mean, between stops is only a couple minutes. And so the whole interaction less, lasted less than five minutes. Some people say I was trying to choke him to death, which is also not true. I was trying to restrain him. Now, just to be clear, we showed you the clip a long time ago. Everything that he says there, I believe, is true. It's just, it's just the man's yells were oddly specific. Like, I'm, yeah. pre I'm prepared to go to jail for a long time. <laughs> yeah, it seems like, <laughs> what, did he pass him a note? Like, yes. with a, like a will in Last Testament? <laughs> I understand that a, a, a blood choke is a, is a safer way to go than some... I, I agree. I consent to this because I have blood choke insurance. It's almost like he was asking for it. <laughs> yes. You know? Like he's like, hey, could you please, please give me the sweet relief of death? Yes. I've been living on the subway for... I've been asking people every day to choke me out. If I say I'm going to kill everyone, will you choke me out? Here's a note. Check yes or no. <laughs> if I blink oh, twice, keep holding it. Yes. <laughs> also, my blood type is AB negative. Very rare. You got to call my nurse. Her name's Tabitha. And... Ah, and then just starts hitting people. <laughs> I'm going to say to stop, but don't stop. Read between the lines. I'm prepared to go to jail. Life sentence with no commute. I hope no one jokes me. Like, I'm just on <laughs> my third strike. Yeah. Seems very specific, but everything else uh, checks out with, you can go back and, and, and see uh, our coverage of this. I'll give you another example. This is not unique in New York. Uh, John Rote was uh, a man who was charged uh, because he shot a gun in the air to scare away, again, a subway 
mugger. Uh, this was a criminal possession of a firearm. <clears throat> now, let's contrast that in New York, uh, not only with the policy at large. Oh, sorry, I just unbuttoned. I need to rebutton my shirt. Oh, you were. I, I was <laughs> like, I wasn't going to say anything, but it looked like you were slowly like taking button by button. I've been really trying, no undershirt here, fellas. <laughs> I didn't think this through because. <laughs> <laughs> Now we're just looking at your chest, Moss. That's great. <laughs> it's okay, Tim. You can go to me. Yeah, I'm, no, no, no. Look I'm at, past let's the point. Look at these I'm past the let's point of feeling shame. Please. He thinks he's going to save my dignity by going to a blow-up doll. <laughs> <laughs> let's see those shifty nipples I keep hearing about. <laughs> my mother's <laughs> watching. All right. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right. Well, Gerald will be back Monday. Well, I'll be back tomorrow, actually. So let's contrast this. Somebody of course, call us babysitter. <laughs> And we know who we hope it is. Mm. Now, um, you have the, the, the crime policy, right, which we'll get to, the, the bail reform and, and the stats on that. But here's a very specific example. You have John Rote. You have Daniel, uh, Daniel Penny. Okay, let's contrast that with this Latino man who did uh, also shoot a subway menace, and I would say a subway menace. This was done in self-defense. All right. So I think that the law should be applied equally, and I think that all of them mm -hmm. should obviously uh, be met with a parade. Agreed. Uh, uh, see if you can spot the difference, though. Latino man, pretty similar uh, scenarios, not charged at all. Next here, New York's governor holding an urgent transit Funny safety meeting after that rush yes. hour subway <laughs> shooting in Brooklyn. No charges will be filed against a rider who shot an aggressor in the head after taking his gun. Now, the media won't identify the shooter, so if you check the references today, they're a little bit uh, sparse because we can't find it. Now, <clears throat> it's not like this is a problem, by the way, that the left is unaware of. That's the issue. It's not like illegal immigration is a problem that the left is unaware of. Uh, you, you can attribute bad intentions now. It's not simply ignorance. You can't. Um, you can't just say they're ignorant. Because Kathy Hochul, the uh, uh, <laughs> governor, which is so funny, not really, uh, acknowledged that the subways are so bad there that she deployed the National Guard. The plan includes deploying nearly 1,000 National Guard members and state police to do random bag checks at some of the busiest subway stations. Now, remember, Representative Tom Cotton wanted to do that during the Black Lives Matter rioting, and he was accused of being racist. Mm. So this is what they do. This is what the left does. They turn criminals into a voting block, and you, the taxpayer, law-abiding citizen into a criminal. Hey, under former Vice President Joe Biden, let's apply this to the country at large, over 7.5 million illegal immigrants cross, that we know of. And counting. 7.5 million. You, those get into the wrong states, and then, of course, you have no voter ID because that's also racist. Guess what? You've just changed the entire electorate of the country. Let it go four more years. You got 15 million. Minimum. At minimum. Minimum. Think about that. So then you have people who come here illegally who have no interest, right, in respecting our laws. They actually have an interest in breaking down our laws. And then they have a complicit Democrat party who say, yeah, absolutely, let's tear down these laws. Oh, wait a second. Violent crime? Usually there'd be some kind of bail. No, we're not going to do that. But we are going to punish the man who stops the violent criminal. What kind of a country do you want to be? That's a question that needs to be asked. It is an important question. I mean it. It's not hyperbole. And, and, and in New York, by the way, the crime is not just... Um, it's not just relegated to the subway. So uh, let's give you another example. In Flushing, Queens, there was a homeowner. And this is something, uh, if you haven't seen the film uh, Pacific Heights, I highly recommend it with Michael Keaton. I believe it was 1990. Uh, squatter's rights. This is something that just always seemed silly to me. When I was a kid, I learned about it. I said, squatter's rights? Wait, hold on a second. You mean people who don't, they don't pay for the, what? Mm. what about the person who owns the property rights? Isn't that a thing? Hey, Dad, didn't I hear something about property rights? Isn't that, isn't that? Partially the basis of our country was kind of a big deal to us. Oh, squatters' rights, freeloaders, oh, criminals' rights. Let's be clear. That's what it is. A homeowner in Flushing, Queens, was arrested for kicking out squatters who stole her $1 million house. Odell, you're getting arrested right now? I'm being arrested. For what? For being, in for, being in my, for being in my own home. Jeez. For being in a legal house, man. <laughs> Just think about that. The person who owns the house is arrested. People will often accuse you of seeing everything as black or white. I don't. I understand that there are gray areas. I don't believe that there is as much gray as the left wants you to believe because they love to deal in moral ambiguity. But at this point, when you say there's a law, okay, is it squatters' rights or homeowners' rights? We saw this to a lesser degree 
in society at large with rent forgiveness. We just don't necessarily connect the dots. Hold on. Rent forgiveness. You don't have to pay rent. Okay. So the home provider doesn't have to make the payment. No, they do. Oh, I was like, there's a rent forgiveness. So they're not paying them any money. Yeah, that's correct. But these people still have to pay the property taxes. Yeah, 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 they do. Or they'll lose it. Well, hold on. How about the yeah. person who signed the contract that said, I'm going to pay rent is beholden to that contract as we all are, as the owner of the property is. And now you have a criminal example of it. Squatter, owner, owner arrested. What kind of a country do you want to be? New York has given you their answer. Doesn't make any sense because what happens if you're the homeowner? You pay, you don't pay your taxes because you can't afford it, right? Maybe you're living yeah. two homes, paying two mortgages, whatever it is. You can't pay the taxes. Someone else is squatting there, not paying your rent. Don't pay the taxes. What happens? You foreclose, goes to the bank. Now who's going to pay the property taxes there? Right. I guess the bank's paying the property taxes. Well, they get it for pennies on a dollar. It's a foreclosure. Oh yeah. Well, I guess they're good then. There you go. You and own nothing and you'll love it. Hold on a second. Wait a second. Banks. Oh, that's right. Giant bailouts too. Oh, too yeah. big to fail. You're not too big to fail in owning your property. No. Banks are too big to fail to get to swoop in and take it up. And it all starts with the little squatter that could. Yes, Douglas Town, uh, Queens is another example. Here's a squatter that refused to um, leave the home after the previous owner had died. That's not your home. That's not your home. But the reason they feel so emboldened is because this is law in New York City. Here's the actual law. Squatters actually cannot be removed by the homeowner after 30 days of occupancy. It's considered an unlawful eviction. Here's the thing. To me, if someone isn't paying a dime and you own the property, uh, it is impossible for it to be an unlawful eviction. I believe the legal term should be boot to the ass. How, wait a second, because someone snuck in for 30 days, it's now their right? What kind of country do you wanna be? Binders keepers. And by the way, this is not something, this is not something that uh, is unknown to people who are looking to abuse the system. So, for example, we've talked about illegal immigrants. Here's actually a Venezuelan migrant giving advice on how to take advantage of squatting rights in America. Mi gente, he pensado invadir una casa en Junay Estate. He's a doctor, right? Ya que me enteré I think he's a lawyer. Que una ley que dice... He speaks so loudly and so slowly. Must be smart. Wearing lipstick? No, that's natural beauty. africanos. Y me dijeron que ya llevan como siete casas expropiadas. And by the way, for people listening on audio, we, we have subtitles. It's basically an instruction manual. Yeah. yeah. It sounds like we're the enemy. It sounds like we're the enemy to them. They're like, yeah, come here. Right. Take this shit. Well, they're really, it is conquer. It's just not a military. Conquer, yeah, that's what the, that's, that's the, the term I'm looking for. Yeah. They're, yeah they're, they're coming here to conquer. Yeah. I mean, little things for themselves. Not, right. I mean, but still, like, yeah. that's a microcosm of a huge problem. Yes. Right. And then you um, <clears throat> you mentioned some with, with Gerald. Yeah, well, since Gerald's out, I decided to do a little squatting of my own. Well, really? How's that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, his office is free, so I just thought, you know, I'd take over that crib. I got a new crib. You want to see? No. What's up, everybody? I'm Josh Firestein, and this is my crib. Check it out. Now, I just moved in, so I don't got a lot, but, you know, what I got means a lot. You know what I'm saying? Like, over here, I got this light, just in case we want to go out on a spooky trail. I got you, I got you. I got my guitar, all the ladies love a guitar, you know, it's a three string, I'm a three string man. It's got some cool stuff like this, you know, I just touch it. Nah, I'm just playing. We got a TV, you know, they say it's 32 inches, but I think it's more like 30, 38, 40. If you want to get down, boom, look at this. They say Netflix and chill, mm-mm. I got you on the DVDs, baby. Got my comedy club, comedy special sign, you know. Just remind everybody that uh, I got 3,000 views, no big deal. I got my fridge, gotta show everybody the fridge, show you how I'm living in here. There's nothing in the freezer, don't worry about that. And then I got my desk, this is where I get all the work done. You know, this is where I do business deals, but I gotta keep myself grounded. So I got my skateboard here. Remind me of the days when I used to shred, baby. Hell yeah. And uh, I'm just moving in, so please excuse the mess. You know, I uh, got some boxes here. Check out that shoe collection. Boom, I got everything in here. And uh, yeah, that's, a, that's about it. You know, it's a work in progress, but I didn't pay for this, so it's a win for me, you know? But uh, you know, last but not least, I 
gotta show you guys where the magic happens. Hell yeah, what you think ladies? This thing's big enough for the two of us. All right, well, that's it for today. It's time for y'all to go, because I got some stuff to do. I got some reading to catch up on, and uh, I'll see y'all next time. What's the obsession hey, with everyone's Stinger. fridge? That's the big thing. <laughs> yeah, I don't this, know. This is what's in my fridge. Like, I don't know. Okay, so I care that John Cena has vitamin water. What? <laughs> yeah, I never understood. There's like, I didn't show the pool, by the way, but there is a pool. Yeah. Uh, and I have some nice cars out front. But. Well, it's a roof drip, actually. Yeah. So much. <laughs> by the way, let's uh, put a note in uh, to a man. We have to call the plumber. Yeah. And the squatting is ridiculous, dude. This is the reason why I um, I sold my house instead of renting. We wanted to rent it out and try to keep this house. Like I was telling Tim earlier, it's like generational wealth. I wanted to build some generational wealth for my kids, sure. maybe own a property for, for years, pay it off, and then I have either a home to give them or... or some kind of nice little nest egg of a, of a money. But they put this new law into Tacoma, Washington last year uh, into place where from the months of, I might be getting this wrong, but uh, from the months of October uh, through April or May, uh, you cannot be evicted from your house under a few different circumstances. One, if you work at a school. Two, if you have kids in a school. Uh, and three, because it's the winter time. Well, you that last one be... is pretty broad. It seems like it applies to everybody. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you, you know, if you work in education, but I can't control the seasons. Well, yeah, but so I don't understand why they, why they put the, thir well, yeah, the coldness in there. But, uh, but yeah, they, they said you can't be evicted if you don't pay your, your rent. So like, somebody could basically move in in October, right. not pay rent until May, and the homeowner's just fucked. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, for lack of better words, like, I, you, you just go... And these people don't care. Yeah. And these people don't care about their credit score, you know, they don't care about their no. rent history. Yeah, exactly. And now you can't now you can't be discriminated against because of your rent history. I love I love that they add winter. It's like, well then don't add any other other of the previous. I might be misquoting that. Just Someone say, in the chat's gonna correct just me, say I know, but you can't evict anybody. Yeah. Why? Because it's a season. Okay. I, might be, I might be a little off on the winter thing, but the the school thing is definitely part of it. Um What if you can't be within six hundred yards of a school? I don't think that matters. I don't think. I don't think. All right. no. If you're there, it doesn't matter. No, exactly. Think about it. This is something that you want. Hey, who does it harm? Harms you saving for your family. It's like, you... I'm not a. I'm not a mogul. I'm not some no, high no. rent home like homeowner landlord. It's just some of us own one home. Yep. And rent another one in another state and just want to. I know. Have that investment. That's plenty of people. Anymore. And by the way, too big to fail. BlackRock Vanguard. They get to buy up a. They get to buy up a, an entire district of single unit, you know, family homes, mm -hmm. and then they. Raise the price in rent. And That's they lose rent for five months. It's no harm to them. It's no harm to them. It is no harm done to them. They still control you. So they get bailed out and the mom and pop home providers lose their homes to mm -hmm. squatters. Yeah. Think about that. What kind of a country do you want to be? And let's, uh, let's uh, take a bird's eye view of this a little bit. Not just the squatters' rights, but we also have crime in New York. Of course, we talked about the subway. We talked about squatters. There's been the bail reform. You've heard us talk about that. Some people have called it cash bail, no cash bail. Um, in New York now, two-thirds of those who were freed under the bail reform, this just came out. This is New York Post. Uh, they reoffend. Oh, what? <laughs> so half were arrested oh. for new felonies, and 327 people were responsible for one-third of the shoplifting arrests in the city. 327 people were responsible for one-third of all the shoplifting arrests. You can go and crunch those numbers. That means... It was not just repeat. It was repeat, 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 repeat. It was like the, the elf, elf revolving door of shoplifting. Yeah. We should invent like some kind of system that keeps these people in check and, and uh, holds them accountable for their actions. Yeah. And maybe They're, puts them somewhere where they can't be doing that anymore if they do these things. Oh, like a law. Oh. Sure. Oh, oh like a, now I'm a law. Jail or something, yeah. Conjunction, junction, what's your function? <laughs> Recidivism and letting them out late. <laughs> Squatting in your house and never leaving. <laughs> I used to be a squatter. Now I'm a homeowner. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I hope somebody turns the power back on or I may die. All right. <laughs> <laughs> this is ridiculous. This is the, at a certain point, the plane with the fat lady, the fact that there are laws where you can't misgender somebody, and that's just a law designed to be a land, it's a, a land, a field of landmines, and they're adding to it because you can't possibly get it right. You can't defend yourself on the subway unless you have the right shade of skin. You can't actually enforce the laws and, and take ownership of your own property that you have paid for because there's a squatter there. Oh, hold on a second. You are now a shopkeeper. It doesn't matter. You can't stop the 
these people depending on the city if they're stealing from you and if it's under $999. Also, one third of all the shoplifting arrests are, are 327 people. Well, guess what? We're going to let them back out and they're not going to need the cash for bail. Think about it. These people don't need cash to simply be released. You need cash to pay the property taxes in a home that is being occupied by a squatter. You do not live in a free country or city because there are some laws. Are they applied equally? These laws are designed to displace you. It's not the great replacement theory. It's, it's the great displacement movement that is happening right now. They are displacing you, the American taxpayer, the homeowner, the, the, the person seeking the American dream, and they are displacing you with criminals systematically. 7.5 million at least nationwide in New York City. Thousands of people, squatters, Criminals, none of the, no accountability on one side, only for you. It's a system, when people talk about the travesty of our justice, it's not black or white. In certain areas in this country, it disproportionately is advantageous to people who seek to destroy the system. Oh, and by the way, there's also a movement from the left for violent felons to vote. <laughs> There's deep consequences to this, too. Things that, you know, you can go on for hours probably thinking of the little consequences that we don't generally think about. Mm -hmm. But stuff like you can you can you can be mugged by somebody in front of your house, mm -hmm. hit and mugged, call the police, you get arrested. And guess what? They're back. Yes. Yep. And now you're terrified because you're facing the consequences of calling the police on them. Right. Yep. And now they're back and they're in your house. And you can't get rid of them. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, you're a store owner. It's like, you know, our store owners used to, or some, in some places do still fear, like mob control. Right. They have to fear that from from these, I mean, uh, to be fair, not all of them, but a lot of these people are members of gangs right. or members of groups, little community. They get together, they have little communities. Sure. And they take care of each other, they walk each other's backs. So some lady calls the cops because you're stealing uh, a bunch of stuff out of the, the bodega. Yeah. All of a sudden, now his, now his, him and his friends are going to show up, right. and they're going to steal everything. They might not beat you up, they might not hit you, but they're going to steal everything from you. And what are you going to do? Call the cops again? No, I'm calling a rooftop Korean. <laughs> oh, okay. Bring him yeah. back. <laughs> Bring back the rooftop Koreans. They didn't have a chip in their brain. Remember that during the Los Angeles riots? They didn't have a chip in their brain for just giving up their property. I was, no, 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 no. Mine. I pay. I shoot. You steal. I shoot. No, you can't do that. But no, 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 no. They're criminal. I own. I shoot. <laughs> no, no, no. You, you're not allowed to do that. I get on roof. Better vantage point. <laughs> and because there's that language barrier, the cops just said, "Fine." <laughs> <laughs> Different time, man. Yeah. Different time. But now, if you don't, if you don't remember this, the Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg, right, is a Soros-funded bureaucrat. One million dollars from Soros's Color of Change pack. So this is not some crazy conspiracy theory, tinfoil hat. Hey, one million, I don't know if you know this, makes a big difference. Makes a big difference as it relates to being a DA. That's a huge sum of cash. And if you look at Soros uh, you know, at large, he's funded DAs all over the country. 75 cities, over $40 million have been donated. The goal is to try and export New York City, <laughs> their culture, which is not American culture, to the rest of the country. And this is why half of New Yorkers at least half of New Yorkers want to leave New York City. So when people and say, the other half are rats. Yes, yes. So. <laughs> They're very large, so when they do the head count, they do it in the dark. That's how, that's how Kevin McAllister got lost. <sighs> Is it? Yeah. His parents were in Florida, and he was in New York. I My parents are in Florida? <laughs> yeah. I'm in New York. I can't do the eyebrow thing. It's like, oh, yeah, you forgot, you forgot the horrors from last year. <laughs> He wouldn't get through the second sentence before getting kidnapped. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> My parents are in Florida, and I'm... <laughs> and you are now not in New York, probably. <laughs> the Home Alone sequel. It's like, he's like, oh, I'm praying for my mom back. He gets a miracle. And then he forgets immediately. Where he's like, yeah, this is a good idea. I'm going to go out into New York City by myself. Yeah. <laughs> uh, forget about last year where I almost had my fingers bitten off by a hardened criminal. <laughs> I'm happy to find myself in these boots again. So half of New Yorkers, greatest city in the world. Well, half of New Yorkers don't think so. Half of New Yorkers don't want to live there. And, you know, I can't imagine why. New York, concrete shit, holes, tree, crime, tornado. No one will protect you. Now you're in New York. These creeps will camp in your bedroom. There's nothing you can do. Get the hell out of New York. New York, New York, New York. Oh, oh, oh. 
That's all Jay Z does. Um, uh-huh. <laughs> that boy good. Oh, uh-huh. That boy good. Fine. <laughs> Billion dollars. That's all he has to do now. Billion dollars. <laughs> Billion dollars to the former drug dealer who lives next to De Niro. Um, <laughs> he killed his mistress. This is just allegedly. allegedly. You don't know about that? Thank you. Oh. Alleged. So recovered. Well, maybe Beyonce did it. Who yeah. knows? And you can com- if you live in New York City, comment below. We'd love to. We have a big sample size here of you watching uh, and listening. So let us know how it's changed. We have people who live here who actually will try and avoid going back to see family in you just because of how bad it is. Um, and, and and this is where we get to the point. You know what's going on. Everybody knows what's going on. At least half of New Yorkers know it to the degree that they want to leave. And so what does the media do? What does the media do? Who are in? They're in cahoots. They're a posse with the DA, with Soros, with the viewpoint, this ism, with the government of New York. Well, instead, they try and tell you, don't believe your lying eyes and ears. You're crazy. Crime is down. New data from the FBI that shows dramatically declining crime rates across the U.S. Still, though, a majority of Americans believe crime is getting worse, even though this new information paints a different picture. Crime rates are actually dropping and in a big way. Crime rates are actually declining and in a big way. Crime rates are actually declining. Crime rates across the United States are dropping significantly. It's like they have the same crime script. Crime has gone down yep. quite they considerably. Got talking point. It's like they have the same. And by yeah. the way, this is happening for two reasons, okay? All references are available at ladderwithcrowder.com. One, if you have a crazy, unprecedented spike in crime for, let's say, one, two, three years, and then it goes down slightly, well, that's technically a decrease. Right? So if it goes up by 1,000% and then goes down by 50%, that's a decrease. So that really depends on the timeline. You see this a lot. For example, they've tried to do this with Donald Trump and some of the, uh, the prosecution, where rather than going uh, you know, qu- with quarterly statements, they try and go year to year where it doesn't take into account certain contracts. This happens a lot, by the way. They try and pick the start point and end point. That's where you can see data being manipulated. It's not that data isn't valuable. It's not that statistics have no, uh, no redeeming qualities. Of course they do, but they can be manipulated that way. So number one, they try and mess with the timelines. Okay. Number two, the FBI in 2021 started accepting after huge spikes in crime of course they started accepting data from only one source the national incident-based reporting system nibrs which is almost like at that point just say the whole thing it's not that much shorter now in 2022 uh, almost one third of all law enforcement agencies did not report any data to the nibrs so think about that for a second so new york city says this is the only system that we're using and then you look at law enforcement agencies saying yeah but we don't report the crime there now they tell you, you're crazy. What, you think crime is up in New York? Because you're experiencing it. No, no, no. No, according to this sole reference point that we know is not being used by the people who would actually be on the ground reporting the data, you're wrong. You're crazy. What, are you just voting? Are, are, you, just, are you just opposed to the mayor or the D? Because you're racist? That's what they do. If they simply tell you that what you are experiencing, what you see, what is true, is false. They start with that, then they can throw whatever ism they want at you. For example, they can just tell you, uh, hold on a second, not just relating to crime. Wait, wait, wait. No, actually, the attempted suicide rate of transgenders, no, it goes down dramatically after transition. It's not true. It's the exact same. It's a 42% attempted suicide rate. But if they tell you, no, 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 that's not true. Sex change fixes it. Why? So then why don't you support taxpayer-funded sex changes? Are you transphobic? Well, hold on. Even then, it's still silly, but it might hold water if you weren't lying on the premise. So let's contrast this, by the way, with the National Crime Victimization Survey, which interviews citizens directly, which is why, of course, they don't want to use these systems. Like theirs was an example. When they're, you interviewing, report- sorry, they're interviewing victims specifically, right? Yes. Okay. In this case, they're in it. Why? Because it's a necessity at this point. Right. Only four in 10 violent crimes are reported. Only three in 10 property crimes are reported. So maybe there's a split the difference. But we know the corruption that is taking place. Now, it may seem as though the solution to this is, 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 is obvious, um, at least for New York. Start enforcing laws and locking up violent criminals. That's my suggestion. Comment below. That's me, Mr. Old Fashioned. Let's at least start with that. Oh, wait, you're a squatter? Hold on. Did you pay to be here? No. You're out. Oh, wait a second. Did you, did you say that you were going to kill everyone in the subway? Yes, I did, officer. And then did you assault somebody? Yeah. Okay, he was well within his right to choke you. Of course, the person might be dead, so you can't interview them. But this is, you know, this is just a hypothetical scenario in which you'd be interviewing, I guess, a ghost. Mm. But the point (laughs) remains, it should be that simple. It used to be, since the history of, well, it depends on how far back you go, um, ever, ever, 
We arrested violent criminals. That's kind of the primary reason for laws. As a matter of fact, I bet if you went back in the caveman days to, to establish the first laws, there was probably one caveman who was getting a little rowdy and raping a little too much because, you know, they, one rape, two rapes, they allow. They kind of, they would let it slide, the caveman. They weren't one rape, super, shame on me. Yeah. But there was probably one who got a little bit wild. They're like, hey, look, caveman Jack, you can't be here in the cave anymore on account that you keep raping everybody. But I feel so good. Yes. That's what caveman sounds like. Uh, okay, okay, Freud. <laughs> what? You just can't rape everybody. What does that have to do with your mother? Just stop rape. That's probably the reason for the very first laws. Hey, we have to protect ourselves now that we've become a community against people who want to harm the community. And this is progress. Progress is now doing away with the laws that protect the community. The community they want to protect, criminals. So the idea of locking up criminals, you may say, is sensible. But that suggestion is so shocking that CNN anchors can't even imagine it. I'm looking at the dates that their arrest started, which is probably close to when they got here. They've only been here a couple of months. So what the detectives are telling me is they have crews here that operate in New York, do all their stealing, then go to Florida to spend the money and then come back. I love and the they just stay and steal in Florida. And they said, because there you go to jail. Oh. <laughs> oh, you don't brilliant. say. Brilliant. Thank you, John. Well, that's an interesting approach. <laughs> because over there, if you commit violent felonies, you go to jail. Oh, fuck. <laughs> what is jail? <laughs> By the way, this this kind of thing, it, it does not encourage people to become police officers or to stay police officers. Oh, recruitment shortfall. That's right. People don't become police officers because they like the uniform and it seems cool. Yeah. They want to clean up their communities. They want to make a difference for them. I mean, not, I, I get it. Yeah, some chicks take the yes, uniform. But they want to help the communities. They want to do something about yeah. the crimes around them. And then you take that ability out of their hands. They don't, cops don't want to be arresting a homeowner. They don't. They, yeah, exactly. They, hate, they hated that. Well, that's why they want to create the police force and the military in their own image. That's why they want stretchy yeah. maternity suits. That's why they want LGBTQ. It LGBT. will crumble. Yeah. It will crumble beneath them. LGBTQ plus uh, enforced educational training, right, for the police force. So they want to have a police force, jackboot thugs, who are happy to come in and arrest a homeowner. We're not there yet, but that's why they seek to infiltrate the institutions. And this goes back to what kind of, I'll ask you this again, what kind of a country do you want to be? Gen do you want to be a country where 7.5 plus million illegals can cross that border that we know of under Biden, consequence-free, and criminals can simply be released after violent crimes with no cash and commit crimes again while we also uh, arrest homeowners, while we provide rent forgiveness to people who have signed a contract to pay for their rent while still uh, holding the owners of said property to that contract so that hopefully their house can be foreclosed on and, and the big banks who are too big to fail get it. And you have DAs who won't prosecute because they're funded to the tune of millions by George Soros, where you have half of the what used to be you know, this, the, the, the crown jewel of the United States, New York City, where half of its own residents want to leave, where we don't have a national language, or do you want to be a country where if you come in, you sign the guest book, and you follow the rule book? So they'll say that, I don't think, that. The, let me take the most extreme example possible. If you take very, very tough on crime, and I understand you don't want to infringe on people's civil rights or liberties. I'm using an example to make a point. That's the country that you have, New York, or you commit a violent crime more than once, you don't see the light of day for a certain amount of time, 10 years. Oh, you murder? You're gone. Well, how long? Forever. There needs to be a message sent at a certain point in time. New York is a good example. When Giuliani was mayor, a lot of you are young enough to not remember this, broken windows theory, there was not a subway train that came out in the morning out of that station with a piece of graffiti. He said, we are going to clean every single inch of spray paint. We are going to make sure that every window is intact. We are going to make sure that this is a city where people say, hey, we want to take care of our own crap. Why? Because it's a lot nicer now. Isn't this great? And it worked. And crime went down. There were other policies, of course. The left complained about it, said that New York lost its grit. Well, the grit is back. You have New York. You see what it is. Do you want that for the rest of the country? Because make no mistake, that is exactly what the left has in plan for this country if they had power completely unfettered. New York. Detroit, San Francisco, wherever they congregate, the policies end up with eerily similar results. What kind of a country do you want to be? That is really what's on trial here in this next election. It's do you want New York to be applied to the United States? Or 
do you want to return to form? Laws, humanity, protection for people who are pursuing the American dream. You cannot pursue the American dream if someone can take it from you, consequence free. Think the American dream. People used to say home, white, white picket fence, family, maybe some vacation. No, no, hold on a second. That home can be taken from you. The white picket fence, oh, that implies property. You don't have property rights. Family, well, hold on a second. If your son, your daughter wants to transition, we'll take them away from you if you don't allow it. As young as eight, depending on the state, we're, we're not only discouraging, we are making people afraid to pursue the American dream. We, we are basically sending a message loud and clear. No, no, the American dream, you peep, that, that's dead. Okay, we're not going to allow that. 7.5 million, come on in. What's your dream? Whatever you want. No, 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 no. What you have wanted since the inception of this country, that's no longer, that's no longer on the menu. 7.5 million, come on in. Come on. Let's start with New York. What kind of a country do you want to be? The good news is, you have some choices here. The good news is that New York has not spread like the cancer it wants to be across the country. And you have the opportunity to block it. And we'll talk more about that. It's Chat Thursday, of course, here on Mug Club, where we take a lot of your questions. None of it happens without you. We have the big undercover um, release on Monday. $89 annually, ladderwithcredit.com slash Mug Club. You can go mugless for $9 a month. You get a full extended show like today. You get a Friday show. You get Alex Jones. You get the Hodgwins. You get Mr. Guns and Gear. You get Nick DiPaolo every day. You get Brian Callen. And you get the investigative journalism unit, which, of course, would cease to exist uh, if YouTube had their way. What kind of a country do you want to be? Investigative journalism? Should that still be a thing? No? All right. Then vote for Joe Biden. We've had to. We've experienced this just on a personal level, where we have had to try and circumvent all of these new rules, laws that are created out of thin air every single day, when you can just change the laws and you can do away with laws that actually protect the citizens, what's the point in laws? Hold on a second. You had a law that said someone couldn't steal my house. Yeah, we're doing away with that. Hold on a second. The law says that there's corruption in the government and it's a single party consent state and I have the right to film this and I have the right to ensure that the people know. Yeah, 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 no, we changed that. Hold on a second, the law says that uh, I, I have the right to charge rent for this property, especially if they, I have the right to enforce a contract. Yeah, 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 no, we changed that. Well, well, hold on a second. The law says I have to pay taxes? Oh, we're keeping that one. Yeah, yeah, you don't do that. Guys with guns come and take your shit away. We'll talk about that and more uh, right now on Mug Club. If you're on Rumble, click that button. You get to keep watching YouTube. I have no idea if anything is still even on the YouTube <laughs> show today. The stream yeah. is it? Yeah, we've had well, a I good amount of it. still going. I still. We'll see if we get a strike for it. I yeah, I can't imagine getting a <laughs> getting a strike for reality. It's been a while, so so YouTube. I mean, we dare you, but right now, piss off. <laughs>